I do believe God has a word for us in this time and in this season. We've been in a series called The Divine Do-Over. I don't know if you've been watching, but we just believe that God is wanting to do something different. Like when we come back together, that for us, we're not just going to try to replicate, replicate all the things we've done before. We don't want to just do church the way we've always done church. We want to lean into something. Maybe God's doing something new in the earth, and maybe God's going to do it in us. Amen? How many believe that God's going to do it in me? Say, God's going to do it in me. Amen, amen. And then we talked about beware of drifting. So, like, we don't want to, the, the longer you do nothing, the further away you drift from God. So, in this, in this season where we've been isolated, it's easy to be like, you know, I kind of like church like this. I can just, I can, uh, we can just, this is how it can be. But we want to add some intention to our faith, amen? Because if we don't add intention to our faith, we can just drift away. Drift far from God. Drift far from purpose. And then last week we talked about this is us. That we are leaning into our usness as a community. That perhaps church isn't just about what I could get out of church. But maybe I'm here to edify somebody else. Maybe God wants to use me not just to take and consume and get my word and leave and be like, oh, church was good. And that was like it. Maybe God wants to use you to be a blessing to somebody in our community, in our maybe everything we need and everything we've been praying about is right here in our community. If we lean into our usness, amen. So today, we are going to take some time to talk about this topic, and it's called the blessing that there is a blessing in the pause. There's a blessing in the pause, amen. There's a blessing in the pause. And this is, I think this is a word that God really wants to speak into our hearts. You know, yesterday, I was driving yesterday, and I was thinking, I had the thought, I literally was thinking, what did I do before 1990? I don't know if I got some people before, what did I do before 1990, before there was GPS? How did I survive? How did I even make it? How did I even arrive to places before 1990? I don't know if anybody in here, were you not born before 1990? I'm just, oh, Lord. Okay, 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 good, okay. We got some of the the, the folks on. Do y'all remember before 1990? What did did we have to do to get around? We had maps. Y'all, anybody had an old map? Y'all remember that? We had to have maps. Y'all remember breaking out a map? Y'all can still read a map? No, y'all can't. All right. And then you had to write down directions. I'm coming to my friend's house. Okay, what you say? I got to make a right on the corner. Okay, and then oh, make a left on East Fort. Okay, got it. You had to write it down, had the person next to you read out. The, y'all remember this life? Then we, we, we had to, when all else fails, you had to find some random person on the corner who never, like, had proper directions. They just knew landmarks. Like, okay, so when you get to the red Volkswagen, you're going you're gonna to hit a left. And then when you hit a left, you're going to see a little street. You ain't going to see it right away, but then you're going to make a left at a white sign. Like, it was always, like, something weird. Like, and you could never find track where they were, and you were more lost. Anybody remember this life? What did we do? And then, Lord Jesus, the God came through with a breakthrough called MapQuest. Y'all remember MapQuest? Woo! MapQuest. LJ, you remember that MapQuest? Boy, you had to print out them directions. You didn't need to look. You had to try to, it was dangerous. We had to drive and read at the same time. It was a lot. MapQuest got me through. And then, then somebody, the Lord blessed them with the Garmin. Did anybody have a Garmin? Y'all, I'm taking you way back. Remember, Garmin was the first GPS before he had a little thing you get from Radio Shack. Uh-huh. I'm taking you back. I don't know how we survived. How did we survive without GPS and no cell phones? Like, how do I even get anywhere these days? I'm so scared that I won't have service and my phone will die because I'll just be completely lost. I don't know what to do anymore with my life as far as directions are concerned because I need guidance. I don't know about you, but I need somebody to get me from A to B and I need the ways anointing that will take me around traffic and stuff. Amen. I need that. 
Wade's been acting up. We meet, we having fights these days, me and Wade. But um, this is why we need God. I need guidance. I don't know. And is anybody else like me? Do you have to turn down the radio in order to concentrate on where you're going? Is that just me? Is that just like when I'm trying to get, I'm like playing music and you getting close and you're like, hey, turn the radio down. Turn, uh, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, seven. Why do we turn the why do we turn it why do we need the radio down to see? Or why do we need the radio down to concentrate? Why are we like this? I don't know. I don't know where, what's wrong with us, but just like this. I was thinking about this, and then I was thinking that just like a person without GPS, just how I would feel if I didn't have my phone and if I didn't have service. Have you ever felt like this in life? just in general, just, just lost, just no guidance. Like you don't have a compass. You don't have anything guiding you. Have you ever felt like, I don't know where I'm going? Where do you turn for guidance when, you're, when you feel lost in life? I mean, a lot of us have good friends. That's cool. You turn to your friends. We got therapists. Praise the Lord. God has given us Jesus and therapists. We thank God for the, the anointing on this new day. We also have, you know, like our, our partners, our loved ones. We want to turn, but what do you do when even the people that you turn to, that they, they don't know? You ever, you ever had a problem and you send it to somebody, you like, what should I do? They're like, girl, I don't, I don't even know. Man, bro, I don't even know what to tell you. It's just, we just, I'm just going to be in it with you, right? Where do we go when we can't find the answer? When, we, when we're looking for God, I don't know if anyone else feels lost right now. This is just a weird season where we're about to hit the corner to the new year. And we're still trying to figure out how we get out of this, what we've been in. And you're kind of, we're kind of in this in-between in, in stage. A lot of us have taken new jobs. We've relocated. We're thinking about career moves. We're thinking about school. We're thinking about who we should be with, who we should marry. Should I, you know, should I invest into this relationship? A lot of us are feeling this little in-between time, and I just think today there is a passage in Acts that will, I think we can really relate to this, to this community of people. In our passage today, in the book of Acts, we see a community of people who really needed guidance, kind of like ours. Did I, I didn't think, of, am I in the right spot? How many people need guidance out there? You really need God, like... Not global positioning system. You need God's positioning system in your life. Like, which way should I turn, God? Which Should I do this? Right, left, should I go? Okay, I'm in the right spot. Online people, y'all good? You got people who need guidance? Good. I'm in the right place. Um, I'm, I'm, we're coming out of the books, book of Acts, and we're in the 13th chapter. But I want to give you a little context before so you could just see what was happening before this 13th chapter. So just for a little context, Peter just found out in uh, chapter 10 that the Holy Spirit was for the Gentiles too, which was mind-blowing. Y'all got to like really understand how mind-blowing this was because the Jewish people, they just figured this was for us. Like when the Holy Spirit fell in at chapter 2, they're like, okay, cool, we're doing this new thing, and it's just for us. Like it's just for the Jewish people. Jesus came just for us. And so when the Holy Ghost fell on the Gentiles, the outsiders, the marginalized, the heathens, like they, they got it too? It was, it was life-changing. They had no We never knew. They didn't know that the Holy Spirit was available to people who were not like them. And then uh, persecution caused the church to scatter. So they started all these churches. Everybody was feeling good. We meeting in a temple. We doing all the things. God's adding to our numbers 3,000 people at our church. We got a mega church. And then the deacon Stephen gets stoned, and it caused them to, to scatter. Persecution caused them to flee. They had to even leave out of Rome. Rome started blaming everything that happened on the Christians. Everybody had to get out. So the church was scattered. James... The, of the famous three, the, the, remember the inner circle, Peter, James, and John? James get killed. He gets killed by King Herod. Like King Herod out here wilding. He's just out here just grabbing saints and adding to the persecution. And he kills James, one of Jesus' closest friends. 
And so he le- he saw that people like that. So he's like, okay, cool. Y'all like that? I'm going to get Peter too. Get Peter. Had Peter arrested. Peter gets arrested. He's locked in prison. God miracul- miraculously saves him by bringing an angel. That's all in there. I'm telling you, it's all in. Then King Herod ends up dying in this crazy way. Y'all really should read your Bible. This is better than a Netflix series. Y'all talk, y'all be binging y'all while y'all watching Squid Games and the whatnot. Oh, Lord. Y'all should be watching, reading this Bible. That, this guy has more episodes than the Bible. Y'all should really read how King Herod died in there. I want to give away the spoiler alert, but it's, it's rather weird. I know. I hope you guys will really go back and read now. I, I'm not going to even tell you what it is. Y'all go back and read how, how King Herod died. So this was a very pivotal time in the early church. They couldn't go back to the way things were kind of like how we feel. They had to go through a divine do-over of sorts. Things were never the same. They could never go back to the way it was. They were in this in-between time. What do we do now? What does this mean for our church? How do we hold it all together? What's our next move? This is exactly where the early church was. Their future was uncertain. I don't know if you feel like that. You don't know what. What is 2022? I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not even trying to just surprise me, 22. I don't, I'm not making no more guesses. Um, I'm not making no rhymes. No, no, no. Just, just come on and act right. Remember, they kept saying, just come on, sit down and act right, 2022. I don't got no time. My nerves is bad. All right. Acts 13, 1 through 3. That is our, our passage for today. And then we're reading it out of the New Living Translation. It says, among the prophets and teachers of the church at Antioch of Syria were Barnabas, Simeon, called the black man. Come on here. Y'all, Rian, we going to stay on that for a minute. Simeon called the black man. The black man was in the Bible. Come on. Lucius from Cyrene, which is also another brother. Cyrene is in North Africa. So we got us up in here representing. Come on, Lucius, lion, lions, Lucius. No, never. Okay, never mind. Okay, back. Okay, sorry. Lucius from Cyrene, that's all his name is. And uh, Manin, the childhood companion of King Herod Antipas, and Saul. And this is the Saul before his name was changed to Paul. So this is when his early days. Verse 2, one day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. Verse 3, so after they, after more fasting and prayer, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. May the Lord bless God's holy word. I think that God really has something in this for us, but I just have to point out one more time that two black men assisted in the ordination and commissioning of Paul and and Barnabas, that black people were leaders in the early church. These are things that are never taught to us or told. We act like we ain't in there at all. We were in the early movement. We was in the movement from the inception of the church. So the next time somebody tries to tell you that Christianity is a white man's religion, I want you to send them to Acts 13. Amen. So I want you to think about this group of people that we just read about. Of all the things they could be doing in this moment, of all the things that they could be doing to strategize, of all the things they could have been doing to build up their church, they chose to spend some intentional time in worship and fasting. Now I want you to really think about this because there's a lot of things they could have been. If this would have been us, we would have turned this into Uh, let's all gather and we're going to have a convention on cutting edge ways of how to make our church better. Are we going to have all these, we're going to have a conference of how to make our church grow and how we're going to get millions of people back into our church. We've been scattered, but we're going to send out postcards. We're going door to door witnessing. We're going to have a preacher thon. We're going to have a a citywide revival. We're going to get together. We got preachers and teachers on its own. We about to just have a whole all night prayer, but that's not what they did. They took some intentional time to look into their usness. Y'all remember our usness? That's who we are, our usness. Now, I want you to think about that. After all that was going on, y'all following me? 
They took time to pause. I want you to really think about this. All the persecution, all the drama they have been through, they could have easily been like, hey, let's get together. We need to come up with a plan. Instead, they took time to pause, to take some time to come together corporately and to take some time and just seek the Lord, to pause. Now, this is what I want to talk about. The blessing is in the pause because we're not just going to skip over how amazing the pause is, especially those who grew up watching TV, watching live TV, and there was no, there was no way to pause live TV. Y'all remember those days? You were watching a show. You had to use the bathroom real bad. What you had to do? Wait to the commercial. You waited too long at that commercial. You missed the whole scene. When, when, when was you going to see that again? I don't know when you was there. You going to have to ask somebody at school what happened. You ain't never seeing it again. This is the blessing of the pause. This is, what we, this is why we leaned in it as we know what it's like to pause and what it's like not to pause. And then we got the blessing of a VCR. Y'all remember the VCR? And then you could finally record stuff, and then you could pause it. And then the DVR came. Look at all these technology, these wonders. The DVR came, and we could just pause whenever we want to. We just out here watching stuff whenever we want to. There's a blessing in the pause, and all of us got a chance to be a part of a, a global pause. We were all in a pause. Our, all of our lives got interrupted. My question is, what did you do with your paws? Were you a part of grind culture? I don't know. I felt so much pressure in that pandemic to come up with a business or a strategy. Or if you ain't doing nothing in this pandemic, then I don't know what you're doing. You guys are supposed to read books. I was supposed to start a, a worldwide corporation. I was supposed to sell T-shirts. I was supposed to do Mary Kay. Yeah, it just was so many things that I was supposed to do in this pause that I felt like I felt pressure. But there's a blessing in the pause. Somebody, I want you to really think about this. A lot of our lives, we're trying to make decisions. We're trying to do things. We're trying to, and we just go full steam ahead. A lot of us have ideas. You have dreams. You have visions. And it sounds good. And we just go for it. We just make the decisions, lick it, display. Okay, that's, where, that's the direction I'm going. There is a blessing in the pause. Let me tell you, something wonderful happens when you intentionally spend time in the presence of the Lord. This is what, this is the, the bend that, we, that we're taking. Intentionally spends time in the presence of the Lord. Not, I happen to come to church and Lauren's singing, and that's when I get my praise on. No, I'm talking about there's something that happens when you intentionally spend time in the presence of the Lord. Are you, are you looking for guidance? Let me tell you a secret. It's not really a secret because it's in the Bible. Let me give you a key. Let me give you a major key. In the Bible, if you need wisdom, if you need strategy, if you need purpose, if you need direction, does anybody need any of this? It can all be found in the presence of the Lord. You don't believe me? Let's go to Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611. It says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is what it's like to live your life in the presence of God. Are you looking for direction? It's found in the presence of God. Are you looking for joy? Have you been wrestling with joy? Have you been wrestling with how you could be happy? Are you wrestling with your purpose? The presence of God. Are you wrestling with pleasures? Are you spending your time looking for how to how to fulfill your pleasures? Are you looking for fulfillment? I'm trying to tell you. Listen to me, saints. Everything you need can be found in the presence of God. And we, we skip over this because we're so used to the grind culture. We're so used to give me just three keys and I'm out. Give me my points and I'm out. And we neglect something so simple that the people in the early church did. They took intentional time to worship and to fast. 
Are y'all with me? Y'all tracking with me? What happens when you worship the Lord? I really want you to get this. This is for people who feel lost. I hope I'm talking to the right people. What happens when you worship the Lord? I think we get worship mixed up because we tend to think that worship is for God. Like God is insecure. Like God needs, like, is an egomaniac and God just, like, gets filled up when you just say nice things about him. Like, like it's a video game. You say enough nice things and the, the thermometer goes up or something. We have a weird viewpoint of God, like that God needs the worship, that God is wanting these things from us, and y'all didn't say my name. You know, like, what is he, Candyman or something? Like, we just, we're just trying to, we want to just make God be this thing that like, God's insecure. But let me tell you, worship is not for God. Worship is for us. Do you know that? Worship is for, for you to hear out of your mouth who your God is. It places your problems in the proper perspective as compared to God. So the more you worship God, the more you say, God, you're faithful. God, you're amazing. God, you're great. God, you never fail. God, your love is unfailing. God, you see me. You know me. The more we do that, the more your problems seem more insignificant as compared to your God. So worship is, is for us. And we all heard that old saying, don't just tell, your, tell God about your problems. Tell your problems about your God. Tell your problems who is the king of kings and the Lord of glory. Speak to scarcity and say, no, I live in abundance. Speak to your mind when you're confused and in a fog. Like, no, I have the mind of God. I am walking in perfect peace. I serve a God who sees me, who knows me, who cares about me. Worship is for us. It's to hear it out of your own mouth who your God is. These people came together intentionally and spent some time together with one agenda. We just going to worship God. We got trouble on every hand. We got people dying. We got our church scattered. But we going to come together and worship the Lord. Can someone just lift your hands right now and just say, God, we worship you. Come on, it's something beautiful when we all do it together. God, we worship you. And then the, this, is the, this is the second part. They worshiped and they fasted. And that's the part where we be like, well, let me put my finger up and I'm a, I'll come and worship. I don't know about them. No fasting. Why is this so important? Why is why fasting? This is not like the most popular thing that we do in Christendom. We'd be like, oh, Lord, they called fast. Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord. But let me tell you why fasting is so important. Just like when we're driving in the car and we got our music playing loud and we trying to find our directions. This is what fasting does. It turns down the music in our lives so that we can concentrate and that we can hear and we can focus and we can see where God is taking us and we can see the things that have that God has for him. This is what worship does. This is what fasting does in our life. It turns down the distractions. Fasting invites us to sacrifice something we enjoy to turn down the distractions in our flesh. Now, this is the part that everybody get quiet. I'm, I'm prepared for the quiet. How you doing out there in the way everywhere? Virgil? I'm already prepared. I brought my own amen on today because I know it's right. Fasting helps turn down our distractions. When you sacrifice something, that's your go-to. What do you go to for comfort? What do you go to? when you need a distraction? What do you go to when you're bored? What do you go to when you feel depressed? What is your go-to? So fasting gets to that thing that you lean on, whether it's carbs, whether it's a glass of wine, whether it's some coffee every morning. Now I can need to keep going, I keep going. Whether, whether I'm gonna go back to the carbs. Whether they're, I'm going to keep going. They don't need to hear enough amen. Whether, whether it's rolling up a blunt, can we keep it real? Can, whether it's that call you get at 2 a.m., I mean, we can just keep going. I didn't hear nobody. Okay, he said, <laughs> Jermaine's like, we're good. Stop. <laughs> what is your go-to? Thank you, Naya. Yes. 
Somebody gave me an idea. Fasting is a spiritual discipline. It's a spiritual discipline that we use. Now, get it. We don't use it to get God's approval, to earn a match or merit. Like, look at me. I fast. Like, I'm doing all the things. That's not what it's for. Fasting, again, is not for us to, to brag and so show how great we are. It is to increase your spiritual ear, to concentrate, to focus, to really hear from God, to really, God, I really need to hear from you. I need to sacrifice one thing that really captures my attention. And instead of doing that thing, I'm going to pray. Instead of eating that thing, I'm going to just take some time to be like, ooh, let me read my word. Instead of going to this place, instead of binging Netflix, I'm just going to open my word. Instead of, like, pouring this up, I'm just going, you know, I'm going to just read some scripture. I'm going to listen to some worship. It replaces it, and it gives us a spiritual ear. And I love this because they didn't go full speed ahead which is always my downfall. I don't know about y'all. I get an idea, and I'm running with it. Sounds great. We're doing it. And I'm, like, going full speed ahead in the wrong way. They didn't do that. They took time to pause. Somebody say pause. They intentionally took time to pause to hear from God. They made room for the Holy Spirit to speak. They made room in the context of our corporate worship. But y'all hear me? I don't know if anybody been tracking our series, but we're trying to get church to be about us, not about me. And a lot of you might even be watching this and be like, I thought this was going to be more of a word like that I could take with me. No, no, this is a word for us. So we got to get used to not just, I just, where's my, where's my word, Lord? No, where's our word? What is God saying to us? Do you know the Holy Spirit can speak to us corporately? That's what prophecy is, speaking the heart of God. That's what teaching and preaching is. This is where God talks to us corporately. What did the Holy Spirit say to them when they took time just to spend some time in worship and in fasting? It said that the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Paul and and Barnabas. So the work that I have called them to, he told them to set them apart, to appoint them. Set them apart for a a specific work, a specific work that will edify the community. God wants to, do you know that God wants to set each of us apart, that that, that they weren't just the wonder? That God wants to set, God has something for each of us to do in this community. God has set each of us apart to do something. Do y'all believe that? Because I think a lot of times we just come here and be like, y'all go ahead. No, no, we go ahead. God has something for each of us to do in this community. Notice how uh, there was preachers, there was prophets, there were teachers, and there were missionaries. There were all three different things operating in different capacity. The missionaries weren't going like, man, I wish I was a teacher. The teachers weren't saying, man, I wish I was a prophet. No, no, everybody was operating in their own gift. God has something just for you. God has set you apart for a work to do to edify this community, not to be a wonder, not for us to be like, woo, look at them go, woo, look at that. That was your girl, you know you could do that. That's not what God is calling us to do so we could just highlight and be on stage and do all the things. It is for the edification of this community. Do y'all believe it? So this was so amazing when the Holy Spirit spoke this because what the Holy Spirit did when he called out Paul and Barabbas led to the establishing of churches all around Europe. And these churches were the very thing that opened the door for Gentiles to hear the gospel. Remember, this was all Jewish. The the disciples commissioned Paul to be like, okay, Paul, seems like the the Gentiles is your thing. You go out and do it. They commissioned him to go out to get Gentiles. Raise your hand if you a Gentile. Well, look it, bless the Lord. If you ain't Jewish, then you're Gentile. And because of what the Holy Spirit spoke in a time of worship and fasting, all of us are sitting here loving Jesus, holding a Bible, worshiping God, just because some people took some time to pause. 
What might God want to do in your life if you just take some time to pause? I want you to think about your life. Think about all the things you got on the back burner. Think of all the ideas that you got in your heart. Think of all the things that you want to give to God. And then I want you to not just think about yourself individually. Think about us corporately. Think about the way Christian Center, those who call this home, that we are in this divine do-over. And imagine what might God want to do through us as we go into 2022. Again, are we going to do church as usual? Or y'all just want to get together and we just do the same things that we always do? I mean, that, that could be a thing. It'd be like a social club and we could just do a thing and it will just be us. It be, it's just all of us and we'll just always be together and, and no, nobody else. Are y'all in? I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not here for that. What might God want to do through us? Just think, think of what God did through this first century church. And they had no technology that we have. We have every technology, technological wonder in the palm of our hands. We have jets, planes, internet. What might God want to do through us in the 21st century? These, these, these men and women took the gospel to the place where we are here in the now. Come on, Way Christian Center. What might God want to do through us? So this is our, this is our intention. In the season of a divine do-over, we want to have that same posture as the early church. We want that same posture. Our intention is that we are going to, we're going to pause for the calls. Y'all remember that? We're going to pause for the calls. We, we need more Selah moments in our lives. We need to stop and reflect. Stop and think. Before we go back to business as usual as a church, let's take some time to ask, Lord, what do you want? God, what do you want? That's a revolutionary question. Like, we never just stop and say, like, okay, God, so what were you thinking when we start opening back up? What do you want? And and a lot of us, we... We want to tell God, let, don't just tell God, what, let's ask God. Because a lot of us, we got our whole list like, so God, here's the list that we were thinking of all the things that would be great in our lives. So can you just like take this list and just like bless it? It'll be wonderful. Like not tell God what to do. Think about your life. Not just tell God. A lot of us need to just surrender our whole planner, our whole calendar, our whole dream journal, our whole to-do list. We need just to surrender it to God and say, God, well, this is what I was thinking. But what what are you thinking? What's your take on it? What's your heart in this situation? How do you see this person that's difficult (laughs) in my life? How do I deal with this family member? What's your heart for them? God, what I was wondering, what's your opinion about this? In, in, in Samuel, um, 1 Samuel 30, David asked the most amazing question of God. He said, God, should I, shall I pursue? There was like an army coming, and he didn't know what to do. They had taken all his kids and his children. And he first came to God and be like, God, so what are we doing? What's the plan? Should I, should I go for it or should I not? And God said, yeah, pursue. You'll surely overtake them. How many times have we asked God, God, should I go for it? Should I do it? This, this, this message hits me so hard because I hardly never stop and pause and ask God. And it's gotten me in a world of trouble, let me tell you. I had so many regrets because I go full steam ahead and never stop to say, God, what is your heart in this? So we're going to take this week to pause and make room for God through fasting through prayer, and through worship. This is how you take time to hear from God. If you're confused, if you need direction, if you're trying to figure out what college to go to, if you're trying to figure out what job to take, if you're trying to figure out who to love and who to marry and who you should partner up with, 
if you got a new job on the horizon, if you got any of these categories, any of these things, if you are seeking God, if you are in a crossroads right in, in your life, some of you are like, I don't know what to do once everything opens back up. My old business is gone, my everything. We could just go scenario after scenario, but if you are someone who is in need, you're, des you're in desperate need to hear the voice of God, we are going to come together as a corporate body to take time to pause. Pause your life for just one week and lay it all before the God. God, this is, what, this is what I was thinking. I was just seeing, you know, what you think about this. This is who I was thinking about, you know, getting married to and, you know, do a little. But what, what, what do you think? I was thinking about this career plan. I got this business uh, proposal. I was trying to open this nonprofit. I want to do this LLC. God, what, what, what you think? Shall I pursue? Should I go for it? So this week, we're going to be in a whole week of fasting. And that is, you know, we, we now, our church, we do a great job. We do a, a January fast. We do a June fast. So we don't bother y'all much. But we want, we want to really develop a, li a fasted lifestyle. Y'all know what that means? Or we're always in the habit, like, at any moment, if the Lord asks us to drop something, that we're able just to be like, yeah, God, let's, let's, let's just dive into this. And, you know, when it comes to fasting, our flesh really tries to punk us. Do y'all have y'all? This flesh is like Debo out here in the streets. Sometimes you need to fast just to put your flesh in check. Just to be like, no, you ain't running nothing. You ain't got the whole, you ain't running nothing out here, flesh. No, I control when we eat. No, I control when we do this. No, 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 no. My spirit is stronger than my flesh. No, I, I'm not going to, I don't have to eat that. I don't have to have my coffee every morning. I'm not, I'm not having it today. You know, and the flesh start throwing fits, all kind of headaches and stuff. You see, I'm telling you. That flesh be trying to pump folks. That's why you, this is why we need a fasted lifestyle. To keep our, our flesh under subjection. To be like, no, you don't, you don't run me. My spirit runs me. God runs me. And so that's what we're going to do. What, so this is between you and God. We're not usually we say like, no means no sweet. This is between you and God. God, what, what do you, what's one thing that you want me to give up this week? And just listen to God. God will tell you. He might tell you, hey, just put down Squid Games this week. Don't even finish it. Don't turn on Netflix. Just let it, let's just have spend time together. Let's put IG down for a minute. Let's just, you know what, you've been going hard on them candy. Let's get, you know, every day at the same time you need something sweet. Let's just. <laughs> I'm just, you know, this. I'm looking straight ahead. I'm looking straight ahead. Whatever it is, say, God, I just want to give it to you this week. God, just give me the grace to do it. You know, if you mess up, it's no big deal. Like, okay, I'm going to try it the next day. Let's just really spend some time fasting as a, as a corporate body. Let's spend some time praying. So every day at 6 a.m., we're going to be back on Facebook or YouTube for our 6 a.m. prayer. Just log on. All you got to do is log on, and we're just going to have a time of praying together praying together for a week. And then next Sunday, we have a worship night. Y'all, you don't understand the people who are coming. Like, the people who are coming on, on Sunday night, like, tour the country and are amazing, and they will be here. And this is our gift to you, the members of the way, just to have a night where we could just be in the presence of God. But you got to register. It's like 14, 12 people register. I'm like, what y'all doing? Let's like get on register for it. It's Sunday night at 7. Like, I plan on being wrecked. So I'm wearing like sweats. I'm going to be on the floor. I'm going to just, I'm going to bring my own fallout blanket. Y'all don't even have to lay me out. I'm just going to be like, I'm good and just lay out. I'm not, I'm not wearing no makeup. It's going to be a whole situation. So make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. All right, this is our week of intentionality. We are leaning in together. Let's hear 
what the Holy Spirit says. And this is a fast. Usually we fast and we're like, God, what about me? What about me? What about? But I want you to change the, the, the narrative. Let's pray about us. God, what do you want to do through us? How do you want to use me to be a part of my church community? Where I'm not just a, being a partaker on the back row, but I'm really getting in there. And let me just qualify that to say, we all have a different gift to do different things. And it doesn't look the same. So you can't be like, well, all I do is make phone calls or I just like to write cards. And that's it. No, that's your gift. Like, yes, we need you. Like, get in here. You knit. Let's go. Let's uh, You cook. Like, what, whatever God gives you, we can use it here in this community to win souls, to grab, have followers for Jesus, to um, win our community. God, God wants to do great things in our church community, but it takes all of us. Amen. So we're going to close, and this is just a couple of reflection questions. As we pray and fast and seek God, individually, where in your life do you need to pause and ask for guidance through worship and fasting? Where? And then corporately, in what area are you setting me apart to build this community? God has given each one of us a gift. God has given each one of us a special ability for this community. So we're going to lean into it. Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead and stand. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching and logging on. This was, um, I'm, I'm really trying to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I, this was our first day back, so we could have been running around and doing laps and doing all the things. But I really feel like this is where God has us, to be in a place that we're saying, God, whatever you want. Come on, can we just begin to worship and lift your hands? God, we just come to you, and we just say, God, whatever you want, God. God, we just come to you as a corporate family. As a, as a, we come to you as a community, and we say, God, what's on your mind? What's on your heart for this church? We're at a pivotal time where everything's opening and things are changed and we really can't go back to the way things were. So, God, what's your heart? What do you want to do at the Way Christian Center? How do you want to use us? God, we take time to pause. Just like those believers that came together in the early church, we pause. We cast away every ideal and agenda and list that we have and we surrender it to you. And God, we say, God, we worship you. And we were going to take some time to consecrate and fast before you so that we can hear your voice so clearly, so that we can hear you. And God, we say when you speak that we will be ready to answer. God, we will, we will obey you when we hear you. God, we won't drag our feet. We won't shrink back. But we will rise in boldness. God, we just thank you that you're going to use this church, God, as a lighthouse. God, that you will just bring in people, that people will come to know you, that people will be healed, delivered, and set free. God, that you will use us in the community, God, that you will use us, God, with creative ideas. Give us your strategy, kingdom strategies. God, give us your heart for people. Give us your heart for the marginalized. Use us. Give us ideas. God, what do you want? It's all about you, Jesus. It's not about everything we can take, but what can we give? What can we give? So if you're watching this also as we're in our time of prayer, and you might be like, man, I don't even know. I have not even made a decision to follow Jesus. Or maybe you're here in this room and you're like, man, I just, I miss church so much. I just want to rededicate myself. I want to rededicate my life. I want to rededicate and say, God, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. The pandemic took me out, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. If that's you, just say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my mind. I believe that you are God. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that you died, that you were buried, that you rose again. So upon my confession, I believe that I'm saved. And I rededicate. I dedicate or I rededicate myself to you. I'm tired of doing it my way. God, I want to do it your way. I want to have follow your heart. 
I want to know your plan for my life. I'm tired of bumping my head against the wall. I'm tired of making bad decisions. I'm trying to, tired of doing things my own way. God, I give my life to you. God, will you just have your way? God, we love you so much. And we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name.